Well, the ship's on automatic pilot. A few more days, and we'll be home. Home. I almost forgot what it looked like. It's been two long years since we've seen our families. I wonder if my sister's baby is in high school yet. How old was he when he left? One. Well, I think he still has a few more years to go. I mean, we were on Mars. We left footprints on Mars. We ate meals on Mars. I hit a golf ball on Mars. Yeah, what? Nothing. Yeah, Mars was a one-in-a-lifetime adventure. You think it's only once in a lifetime? I mean, what if they ask us to go back? That would be amazing. Maybe we'll ask us to move there. We could be the first settlers on Mars. Do you want to live in a world without ISIS? Let me get back to you on that. I don't know. Earth is kind of, kind of a home for me for now. But one of these days, I'm looking forward to a new home. Where? In heaven. God's preparing a place for all of us who believe in him. Yeah, he is. And I hear it's amazing. It'll make things we saw on Mars seem ordinary by comparison. You said it. That's not going to take away my enjoyment of today. I'm going to enjoy Earth like I enjoy Mars. But sure, I am looking forward to heaven. Me too. You think they'll have ISIS? Good evening, you guys. I'm so glad that you're joining me this Wednesday evening for our virtual kids' church. We're going to continue our series on the journey to Mars. In fact, tonight is our last lesson in this series. And so we have talked about how astronauts have to really train and, and they have to eat restrictive diets and they have to spend lots of hours not only physically doing activities to prepare themselves for space, but even like book knowledge and learning and, and understanding how things work. We talked about how they have to sacrifice so many things to be able to go into space. We talked about also how, you know, they have to trust Mission control here on earth. When they're up in space, they have to trust what people here on earth kind of guide them and help them through different things. And, you know, space travel is so exciting. I know a lot of you guys watching, you, you like to hear all about space and, and NASA and all the programs that they have and that kind of stuff. It's so fun to read and to listen to the stories of men and women who have traveled and worked in space. But you know, all space stories come to an end. And to this day, no man or woman has ever been able to make a permanent home in space. Do you know that the record for the most um, days in space it was by a, a Russian astronaut? And he spent almost 438 days in space. Wow! 438 days. That works out to be about 14 and a half months in space. So a little over than a year. That's a long time to be in space. But in the end, where did he go? He came back to Earth. Back to the country and the place that he calls home. Now I'm sure many of you have kind of felt that way after those vacation blues. You know, on the ride home, you get that when you're coming back from an exciting journey and you've gone to, to Disney World or maybe the beach or I don't know, wherever you guys like to go. But you're ready to go home. You're ready to return home at some point. It's fun to be on vacation, but you're ready to be home. Home is where our family is. Home is where your mom and your dad work. Home is where your school is and your friends and your church. You may not always have lived in the same house. Maybe you've not even lived in the same town or the same state. But here on earth, there will always be a space you call home. Today, as we end our series, we want to look at a future home. This is a place we read about in the Bible, a place beyond even outer space. It's a place that God has promised us long, long ago, even before the time of Abraham. Abraham never visited this space while here on earth. But one day, if we believe in Jesus, we will join him and all the hearers of the faith in a place the Bible calls heaven. After Jesus died on the cross and came back to life, he promised to give a special gift to his followers, 
He told his disciples that he was going to go back to heaven and prepare a place for them to come be with him forever after they died. He said he would make a special place for people who put their faith in Jesus and chose to follow him. Jesus said there would be enough room for all of his followers from all over the world. How can you go to heaven? Going to heaven is like a wonderful present you can only open after you leave earth forever. Jesus promised that one day he would come back to get all of his followers and bring them to live in a new, perfect world without sin. The Bible even says it will be like getting new perfect bodies and new white clothes to wear with no sickness, no sadness, no pain, and no fear. God's people will be rewarded in heaven for all they did during their life on earth to bring glory to God through the way that we live and love. But you get to go there because of what Jesus did, not because of what you did. How can you know you'll go to heaven? The Bible describes it like having your name written in a special book in heaven. Anyone who asks Jesus to take away their sin and gives their lives to him will have their name written in the book of life in heaven. Even though we don't go live there until after we die, The Bible says we are citizens of heaven and already have confidence that we will live forever in heaven with Jesus. But what will heaven be like? Even though we can't know exactly what it's like until after we die, the Bible does give us a few pictures about what it's like. The clearest picture God gives us of heaven is in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Many years after Jesus left earth to return to heaven, The Apostle John was the last one of the 12 disciples still alive. The rulers of the Roman Empire sent John away to the island of Patmos as punishment for teaching people about Jesus. But that didn't stop John from carrying the good news about Jesus even further. God showed John a special kind of vision, also called a revelation, where God showed John what was going to happen in the future. And that future includes when all of Jesus' followers go to heaven after we die. God showed John the throne room of God in the center of heaven. Even though John may have been able to see heaven clearly, it was hard for him to describe in words because it was unlike anything he had ever seen on earth. Everyone in the throne room was all doing one thing, worshiping God. The elders and angels all did nothing but worship God all day, every day. Everything about heaven is all about God. John tried to describe other things he saw, like the colors. He said they were like jewels or prisms that reflected like rainbows. But no matter how we like to imagine it, the Bible tells us that no eye has seen and no ear has heard all of the wonderful things that God has prepared for those who love Him. We talked a lot about the faith of Abraham over the past four weeks. We talked about how he had the faith to leave his family and friends and and his home, the comforts of his home, and travel to a place he'd never seen before. We, We talked about how he learned to have faith to tell the truth at all times. Because we know that whether a little lie or a big lie, lies are not good and they will get us in trouble. We talked about how having faith that miracles can happen. We also talked about the faith that it takes to sacrifice things in order to grow closer to God. The one question we didn't ask, though, is why? Why was Abraham so faithful? What what was he waiting for? What was he hoping for? Abraham had faith that one day God would give him another new home. This home would not be on earth, though. It would be a permanent place free of sin, free of sadness, and free of pain. God would lead him and all who believed in God to a place called heaven. The Bible tells us that if we believe in Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, we can go to heaven. You and I can. We must first confess that Jesus died for our sins and invite him into our hearts. When we do that, we reserve a spot in heaven. None of us here may ever see the surface of Mars, except for on pictures or on a video. And as amazing as it sounds, there's something even greater than that. 
Because one day, when we accept Jesus in our hearts, one day, we can all see each other and God in heaven. Melissa, I hope y'all are doing well today. I have a question I need to ask y'all today. Do you guys know what this is? This is a plane ticket. It takes you places, um, but you got to have this ticket to get there. Um, raise your hand if you've ever been to Wild Adventures. Raise your hand if you've ever been to the movies. Raise your hand if you've ever been to the fair. And what did you have to get into what? What did you have to have to get into Wild Adventures? Or to get to ride one of those awesome rides at the fair? Or going to watch that favorite movie at the theater? You had to have a ticket. Some things you do in this world, you got to have a ticket. And without that ticket, you're not going to be able to do it. Uh, some of these tickets are expensive. This was a plane ticket that Brandon, when he flew to, um, to Las Vegas, he had to have a plane ticket. Like I said, some tickets are expensive, some not so expensive, but regardless of the cost, you have to have a, a ticket to get in. But there's one place you can't that you can go, but you don't have to have a ticket like this. You can't buy it. You don't earn it. Um, it's to get into heaven. Um, this plane ticket here will take you up to the skies, as far as you can see up in the skies. And if you look in the sky, sometimes you can see a plane and sometimes you can't. But when you get to, when you fly in the airplane, it won't take you to heaven. You can't buy this plane ticket and it fly you to heaven. It doesn't work like that. The only way to get into heaven is to have Jesus as your savior. So it's, he paid the price. It's free for us. The most precious thing in the world is free to, free to us and it is our salvation. Um, you can't have a ticket to get into heaven. You just got to have Jesus in your heart. So my prayer today would, would be that if you don't know Jesus that you, and you don't have Jesus in your heart, that you will today. I love you guys. This week's memory verse is Psalms 119, 105. And it says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. So everyone stand up and you're going to repeat after me when we say and break it down. Your word is a... Your word is a lamp for my feet, lamp for my feet, and a lot, and a lot on my path, on my path. Psalms one nineteen one oh five. Psalms one nineteen one oh five. You know it takes a lot of faith to become an astronaut. You have to have faith first in yourself and the ability to do a job that is needed during a space flight. You have to have faith in the equipment too. You put faith in a ship and in men and women who designed it. You're trusting that that ship will get you into space and back home safely. You also have faith in something you can't see from space, and that's mission control. You have faith that men and women watching over your mission back home will do anything they can to keep your mission running smoothly. Many of you may have heard of the, the movie, but this is also something real that happened. It's not just a movie, but Apollo 13. It was a mission, a space mission that took place. And the story tells us of a, a space flight where the men on board the spaceship literally put their lives in, hand, in the hands of mission control. When their ship was damaged en route to the moon, mission control here on Earth had to work day and night to figure out a way for the astronauts to fix their ship and get back home safely. Talk about faith. The same God who led Abraham through the wilderness, who gave him a son and made him the father to the nation of Israel, wants us to have faith in him. If we trust God with our lives, if we give up the things that hold us back from Christ, God will give us a new home when we die. He will take us to heaven to live with him forever. We will see men like Abraham already there. We might even see some of our family and friends that have made it before us. 
But most of all, we will see Jesus when we get there. If you've never booked a, a flight to heaven, you can do that today. Right here, right now, while you're watching from your home. You see, accepting Jesus into your heart doesn't require to you being in this kids' church building. Jesus meets us right where we're at. Right now in your living room or your bedroom or wherever you're watching today's lesson. You know, this week does not only conclude our Journey to Mars series, but it's also a week that we call Holy Week. This weekend we will celebrate Easter. It may look a little different for each of us. But what a special time it is. What happened long ago doesn't change because of this virus. Though our events and, and our family gatherings may not get together, Jesus still died on that cross. Jesus still was put in a tomb. And Jesus still rose from the dead. And He is alive. He died on that cross for our sins. And now He's preparing a place for us in heaven. A place for all those who love and accept Him into their hearts. Accepting Jesus into your heart is the most important decision that you could make in your life. As we, as we close, I want you to take a minute to think about your life. Have you accepted Jesus in your heart? If you've never done so, I really encourage you to think about what an amazing decision this is. I want you to realize that, that accepting Jesus in our heart isn't just a prayer that we say and boom, that's it. It's, it, it is just, it, it's words that we speak. But it should truly come from our heart. When we accept Jesus into our heart, we are making a commitment to do our very best to live a life that is pleasing to Him. Will we ever mess up again or sin again? Yes. None of us are perfect, except for Jesus. But should we keep doing the same sin and mistakes over and over again and not trying to change? No. That's the difference. When we accept Jesus in our heart, when we make that commitment to Jesus, we're asking Him to take our sins away, but we're also telling Him that we're going to do our very best to live a righteous life, to do the things that are right in His eyes. Some of you may have already accepted Jesus into your hearts, but maybe you didn't really take it seriously. This is your time to make it right. Only you and God know where you are in your relationship with Him. And I can't think of a better way to celebrate this Easter week than to ask Jesus into your heart. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord God, I thank you for today. I thank you, Lord God, that as we finish up this series on um, our journey to Mars, Lord God, and we've seen so many things and trusting you and having faith in you, Lord God. And Lord God, giving up those things that have held us back from you. Lord God, I pray that in each of these weeks, it's been like a, an, an extra seed that's been planted, Lord God, and that today we're going to change our lives. For those that have never accepted you into their hearts, Lord God, I pray that they realize the importance of doing that today. For those that have maybe made that commitment, but Lord God, never really changed. It was just kind of some words that they said on a Sunday or a Wednesday or maybe even at their home. But God, I pray that today they truly make that commitment and they realize the importance to live a life that's pleasing to you. Lord God, speak to us right now in this moment. I want you to just take one, just a few minutes, just a, a minute, and let God speak to you. While everything is shut off, while just being still and quiet. Where are you in your walk with Christ? Maybe, you, maybe you're a mom or a dad listening in. Maybe you're a sibling listening in. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus in your heart. This is for anyone. This is an open invitation to anyone who hears these words. God loves you and he sent his son Jesus to die for you. And He's calling you by name. Answer the call today. If you're sitting at your home and you realize that you need to commit your life to Christ, I just want you to repeat these simple words. And again, it has nothing to do with the words that we re repeat necessarily. It has everything to do with your heart. I want you to say, Dear Jesus, 
come into my life today. I realize that I am a sinner. I realize that I need to change. Wipe my heart, wipe my sins away. Help me in everything that I do for it to be pleasing to you. Amen. Lord, I thank you again. I thank you again for what this week means. I thank you again, Lord God, that you are so good and you are so gracious to us, Lord God. God, even though we may not be able to meet in a physical building, I thank you, Lord God, that you are doing a work in all of our lives. So, Lord, we love you and we thank you. We pray, God, that you keep us and continue to protect us. Heal those that are sick. Strengthen those that are on the front lines of this virus, Lord God. We thank you for the testimonies that is going to come out of this. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen.